Hey everybody, Bryce Kuhn here with another episode of The Crowded Booth. We're taking a little bit of a break from college football and we're switching over. As you can see, we have a fantastic guest with us tonight, uh, Frank the Tank Fleming and my always co-host, uh, Ralph Leary. Frank, we appreciate you joining us, man. How's it going? I uh, just watched a, a, a thrilling Mets game, a real thrilling Mets game. Yeah, let's start off with that, Frank. Um First off, what did you think of the live performance? Or what, how, how'd you, I mean, was it – were you there or did you make it there or were you watching the home? Uh, I was there yesterday, so I wasn't there today. I was there yesterday. Uh, not today, but um, I, I did – I liked it. I liked, uh, I liked how uh, it came out. It was a, a – uh, uh, it worked out. Uh, it was electrifying. You know, a lot of a lot of things have been electrifying this year for the Mets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, like it's uh, been a- – Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I mean it's it, it, it's truly been some sort some season. Uh, I actually think that if the Mets, if everything clicks for the Mets, they could go to the NLCS. And I truly think that the Dodgers, Mets are probably the two best teams in, in baseball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's let's talk a little bit about that because I'm sitting there facing the Dodgers uh, last night. It goes to the Dodgers tonight. A big win. Degrom uh, looked really, really great. Kind of what's uh, – do you feel like we're seeing a preview of the NLCS uh, here this week? Uh, we could be. I, I, I think that these are truly the two best teams. Hmm. Yeah, no, and look, you know, Ralph and I have talked about we're kind of – we're based out of Georgia, so we do – you know, we do do a lot of the Braves coverage and everything like that. And obviously the NL East, Frank, is, is setting up, I think, to be a fantastic race in the month of September. Kind of give us your thoughts on uh, – I know uh, scheduling-wise you've made it apparent how you feel – you know, about certain schedules, but, uh, but talk to us about that. I mean, how, how are you feeling uh, about this race entering September? Well, what helps the Mets is uh, their schedule lightens up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So it will be there for, for them. Um, the Rockies uh, have been kind of a pain in the ass for both teams, if you notice that. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. No. Yeah, especially the night and last night for Braves fans. Uh, we have a lot of Braves fans that tune in. Uh, really unhappy with last night, but I know the Rockies gave the Mets some trouble. Um, you, you know, they're playing spoiler, Frank. They don't have a lot to lose right now. No, they, uh, the, Bra- the, the Rockies have to have, the Rockies are, are, the Rockies are a pesky team that just doesn't have, just not a complete team. Yeah. Yeah. That bullpen was actually surprisingly last night. They I mean, they, they threw some guys that I didn't even hear of, honestly, all year. And then, you know, they throw this sidearm guy, throw this upper 90s with a nice slider. I'm, I just never heard of him. And I'm like, Brace can't hit him at all. So, I mean, you got guys that you don't even hear of all year long. They come out of nowhere, and then, you know, they're just annoying. Yeah, it's been, I mean, the Mets, the, the Mets won uh, two out of three when they played the Rockies. And uh, uh, three out of four, I should say. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, the last game, German Marquez out the old uh, Max Scherzer. Yeah, and look, Marquez is a fantastic pitcher. He just doesn't make having a good year. He's having a good year. Yeah, yeah last, year any... was, last year he was unreal. He was an all star last year, and then this year he just, yeah. I feel like he just kind of it was this is a lot different for me. It's, it's the same as a lot of pitchers though from last year and this year. Things have changed. You know, people are saying the balls are juiced again, and then you know things are. There's no even. juicing of the balls this year. <laughs> uh, I saw. I saw a lot of this. Uh, I said, you know, I had. I saw someone. Tweet about a, about a month ago, and I said, "There's just no way." Because I watched the Braves game last night, and Braves made mm-hmm. a solid contact on three or four, you know, balls. That I thought probably would have left in the normal stadium, and just a routine bot fly. I'm like, normally that's uh, not happening. On uh, Saturday night, the uh, the Mets had a bunch of balls that just just died on the warning track. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Talk to me about this, Frank, because this is a lineup that, uh, to me, you know, for us watching the Braves a lot, being down here. Very two different lineups. Uh, the Mets do a good job of putting together rallies. We've seen it up close. Uh, a really good job, in my opinion, of just being tough outs. Uh, you know, is that what you see? How, how do you feel about this lineup heading into September into kind of the heat of a pennant race and, you know, yeah, obviously yeah, going into the playoffs? The Mets, the Mets lineup struggling a little bit right now, but uh, uh, I, I, one player I miss is Louis Guillaume. Yes, he, he, he is the definition of the slap hitter, mm-hmm. and he gets a lot of base hits that um, ordinarily uh, some people wouldn't get. Yeah, he, I think he does a really good job of 
working the count. Obviously, you guys have that. Uh, talk to me, man. Uh, do you think this offense is sustainable throughout the playoff run? How, how do you see this rolling with this offense going through the playoffs? I think the Mets offense is more sustainable in the playoff run. If they get everyone back on track, uh, uh, Pete Alonso has been a little bit of a slump lately. Yeah. Uh, um, but if they get uh, Guillaume and uh, Edwin Diaz, uh, Ed, uh, Ed, Eduardo Escobar to hit a little bit. Mark Hanna has been on fire. Yeah. Mark has mm-hmm. been good all year. Uh, Jeff McNeil is, is is kind of lurking in the race for the batting title. Yeah. 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 The only problem is the Mets just don't have a catcher. The catcher spot is almost like the pitcher spot in the order. Mm-hmm. Ninth in the order, just brutal, brutal, brutal. Now, now Oh, go, oh, go ahead, Ralph. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, I mean, as you go from between Thomas Nito and James McCann, both just, you know, average, not, kind of below average hitters, but the defensively great catchers. I think James McCann is a pretty decent decent defensive catcher, you know. And sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, when we, since we added the DH this past year, it's okay to lose that bat occasionally in the lineup for a defensive catcher. Yeah, think, well, James McCann's defense hasn't been good enough. Nito, you know, Nito's – Nito – Needles is a much better hitter, I believe, than uh, McCann. Hmm. Take me through this, Frank. Um, Ralph and I, obviously, uh, you know, growing up where we are, we've we've been about the Braves. But uh, paint a picture for people who don't know. What does this run right now that the Mets are on mean for this fan base? Uh, I mean, what what does this mean? How has it kind of galvanized that crowd, the electric atmosphere you've been talking about? Uh, One big thing, one major thing they're going to need to do is they're going to need to to keep these players – they need to keep. They need to keep the players that they have. They got a lot of free agents, but it's really turning things around. Uh, I mean, the Will Pond just ran things on the cheap. They might have, the Mets might have had a, a good year here and there, but it wasn't sustainable because mm-hmm. just they never put resources in to keep it. Uh, the new owner looks like he's going to keep it in, and, and he's just made the ballpark experience better. Uh, Old Timers Day was something else. The surprise decision to retire uh, Willie Mays' number, like honoring the past, it's like like uh, a total just like just like night and day from what it used to be. Mm-hmm. No, I, I mean, look, it, it, I think even uh, the most diehard uh, Met haters can admit this is not a fluky team. This is a pro. This is a franchise, in my opinion, that's really turned a lot of things around. Talk about the impact of Buck Showalter. How do you feel about him? Does it feel? Good to have a real guy at the helm, in my, in my opinion. Yes. A guy that has some experience. Yes, yes, yes it does. It's, I mean, the, the guy last year felt like a substitute teacher. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't meant to be the manager. He was an, he was an instructional league coach who was on the coaching staff for Carlos Beltran when, that went, when the shit hit the fan and they had to fire Beltran. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... There's definitely a different experience. There's a different feeling. I mean, it's, it really is getting better. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I think that, um, I mean, just seeing the, the kind of what, what they've been able to do and going forward. Let's talk about this pitching, Frank. Last time they were in Atlanta, um, obviously the Braves – uh, took care of some business, and uh, outside of Degrom and Scherzer, I mean, we know what those guys are going to be come postseason time. How are you feeling about how the makeup of it, maybe three, four, three, four, five in the postseason? Uh, uh, I pitching? feel good about Bassett. Mm-hmm. Walker, I don't like. I'm not a big Walker guy. Uh, I think Walker's a guy you put up against a good team, he's going to get shelled. Mm. Mm. Uh, Carlos Carrasco. There's days when he, he he has it, and there's days when he doesn't. I mean, you saw both days. Yeah. yeah. He got, of course, he got hurt in the second – in the, the, the start in Atlanta. But he pitched well uh, that first game of that uh, four, uh, five-game series uh, up here. And yeah. He did. That, that was big. Yeah. No, that was huge. That was huge. Um, when's the last time you've been to Truist? Down in Atlanta. Truist. I was at Truist when they played the uh, the Oakland Nats. And that was my gotcha. first trip to Truist. Uh, I wasn't impressed by Truist. Really, really, really. What 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 uh what what what'd you take away from uh, the ballpark? Well, and maybe it was the side, the area where I sat. I sat in the four hundred section behind home plate, and you had to walk on a catwalk to get to your seat. Yeah. Uh, 
and it was a tight squeeze, especially for someone my size. Uh, the, the concessions were too far to even go to. The bathrooms were too far to go to, and you had to go upstairs, and uh, it wasn't it, was, it wasn't that, that comfortable of experience. Uh, maybe if I sit in a better section, I might have a better opinion of it. But I was I'm. I've been to 12 ballparks, and I, I would put through it uh, in the bottom third of the ballparks I've been to. Yeah, yeah. That, no, well, look, I, I respect that for sure. I, I just want to know personally, though, what, what was your number one experience, you think? Number one experience at Atlanta? Oh, no, just, oh, no, 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 just, just ball overall. All, all favorite ballpark, maybe outside of City Field. I got two. Okay. Wrigley Field and PNC Park. That makes sense. I've heard I've heard great things about both. Yeah. Wrigley Field for the history. PNC Park for just the beauty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, PNC Park is definitely beautiful. Um, I know. mean, if there if there is justice in the world, the Tampa Bay Rays would be playing in PNC Park, and the Pittsburgh Pirates <laughs> would be playing at Tropicana Field. Uh, Have you been to Tropicana? Yes, it's a dump. It's <laughs> Horrible. It's horrible. It's like it's like watching baseball inside a Costco. <laughs> that might be the best. That might be the best thing I've ever heard about that. I've no, heard that so was many low. things. It's, and that's the best one. <laughs> it's it's horrible. I mean, it's it's huge, and I hate it too because, like you said, if there's justice in Tampa, I had a good franchise for a while now. They they're a playoff caliber team, and. Uh, you know, you, you think they'll ever move, Frank? I, mean, I know you're a baseball historian. You love you love the game. Do you think that'll ever happen? There's a good chance. There's a good chance they don't last long. Mm, mm, mm. Not for sure. For sure. Well, Frank, we're going to switch gears here. Obviously, baseball is uh is fantastic, but we know you're also a big Dolphins fan. Uh, NFL is about to start, so give me the lowdown on how you feel about uh, maybe a little preview into how you feel about the Miami Dolphins, and we'll ask you too because we have a lot of University of Alabama listeners. It's two of the answer. This is the year we're going to find out. I honestly, I honestly don't know. He never really had a good shot. He never really had, he never had, he never had a fair crack, I would say. And I would, and I would say that the reason why he didn't have a fair crack is just the offensive line was was quite simply horrific. Mm -hmm. Horrific. The offensive line for the Dolphins the last few years has been horrific. And I mean, really, uh, the offensive line is, is so, it was so bad that I think it just it just like affected him. He never had a he never had a true chance to prove himself. Hmm. Now they they've improved the offensive line. They've put some good good players around him, and. He's got a new coach that that can actually utilize his system. Uh, he never had Brian Flores' trust, hmm. and um, the Dolphins have bent over backwards, bent over backwards to try and make him successful. Yeah. If he can't get it done, he'll never get it done. So this is it. It's a test. He is really. He's a, they talk about coach on the hot seat. He's a quarterback on the hot seat. How do you feel about their offseason? I mean, how do you feel about what they've what they've added? I think I, don't, I, 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 I like Brian Flores. I'm still not convinced about Mike McDaniel. Mm-hmm. But uh, the uh, the signings the uh, Dolphins have made were terrific. Uh, Tyreek Hill. Yeah. I mean, you can't get better than that. And now it's it's up to us. He can't get it done. Then it's going to be quarterback shopping time. Quarterback shopping time for sure. Frank, uh, are you a college football fan? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Do you um, do you have a team? Are you are you paying attention? Or are you more just? Do you pay attention to the lines? Do you do you put some put some money down in some of the games? Uh, I do a little bit here and there. I'm kind of a Notre Dame fan. Okay. 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 Big week right. one game. Big, big week, week one. one. Yeah, no, not a big week one game. Big week one game will we'll be uh, just hoping the game is close. So you, you're not you're not feeling too good about it. Have you been to a Notre Dame game? No, I've never been to uh, the Notre Dame game. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, no, I've never been to South Bend. Okay, I, I should rephrase that. I like it. I like because it. What the, 
is I actually went to a, um, a Notre Dame game in uh, Tallahassee last year. Oh. Ooh. Now, look, we uh, work, work a little bit closer to Tallahassee. What was your uh, – what, you, how did you feel about that atmosphere? What did you think? I liked it. I liked it. Uh, uh, it was the first game of the season last year, uh, Labor Day uh, weekend game. Mm-hmm. Uh, did a nice they did, they did a nice tribute to uh Bobby Bowden. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Uh, uh, I'll go ahead and ask you this real quick about uh the college. Do you have um do, do you have a favorite stadium atmosphere? Have you been to enough college games to kind of make that decision? No, I haven't yeah. been enough I've not I've not been to enough college games. I went to a division three school, so where'd you go to school? Uh Montreal State. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. We'll uh, kind of wrap it up with this, Frank. Obviously, uh, you work with Barstool has, has taken off, but you also have some ventures on your own. Talk about uh, talk about your, your journey. I mean, this is it's, it, you're living the dream, and, and for a lot of us, I mean, you, you get to do what you love. Talk about that. Well, it's been uh, it's been a it's been a wild, crazy ride. Uh, very interesting. I've gone more places than I ever thought I could make it. Uh, my goal is to one day see all fifty states. I, and uh, I'm now more than halfway through that. Uh, I go to yeah, I've been on road trips. I've been to all these stadiums. It it, it 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 truly is great. No, it truly is. Look, that's that that that's definitely awesome. Give me your World Series. Your two teams that make the World Series. You can be biased. That make it's okay. the World Series. You know, I'm, I, I got to go with the Mets. I got to go with the Mets. I really Respect. think there's a good chance it's the Mets. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, 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 they got the ability. They just got to hope that it holds together for. I mean, it's going to be tough. I mean, uh, I, I actually think that I actually think that the three best teams in baseball are in the. Uh, uh, National League. I uh, uh, maybe I'm disrespecting the Astros a little bit, mm-hmm. but you know what? I I think that the uh, I think if it goes to a World Series, I think the Braves would beat the Astros again. I think the Dodgers would kill the Astros. Yes, and I, I think agree. the Mets pitching, even though the Mets got swept by the Astros in the regular season, the uh, the Mets in not one of those four games against the Astros. Had one of their best pitchers going. There was no Scherzer, there was no Degrom, there was no Bassett mm. in any of those four games. They had Carlos Carrasco got shelled twice. They had David Peterson. Uh, Tyrone Walker actually pitched well against the Astros, and the Mets lost that game uh, two to nothing on a home run by uh, some shitty catcher late in the game. <laughs> uh, Castro there hit the home run. Yeah, yeah, but. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 and you and you saw last year the uh, uh, Dusty Baker when things get tough in the uh, playoffs usually fucks up. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. You saw his frustration in, in Game Six after the uh, Jorge Soler home run. That that just proved it right there. Yeah, for sure. No, for sure. Frank, let's end it with this, my friend. Uh, appreciate you having the show. Real quick, may get you a little rod up with this one. Uh, talk about blooper. How, how do you feel about blooper? Let the Braves fans know. We need we need to hear. It is the most irritating, grating, just ugliest mascot in the history of sports. Worse than the Philly fanatic. Worse than the Philly fanatic. <laughs> wow. I love it. Uh, Absolutely. Man. Absolutely love it. Frank, I know everyone's going to know where to find you, but let them know where they can find you, where they can find your YouTube, follow your work personally as well. Well, you can find me everywhere. I'm on YouTube, Frank Tank Fleming. Uh, subscribe. Uh, NJ Tank 99 on Twitter, NJ Tank 1975. And then you can find me on TikTok, Barstool Frank the Tank. Awesome. Frank, I want to ask some about Barstool uh, with, with TikTok real quick. Is that the real Frank Fleming, or are we getting the real Frank Fleming here? The oh, passion that we see. see? The passion we it's see. Little, it's a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Absolutely love it. Well, Frank, we appreciate it, man. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, listen, obviously, 
we grew up on in the South. So we're a little bit of the Braves fans, but we love the passion. We love to see it. But it's what makes baseball great, for sure. It really is. Right. It's what makes baseball such a fantastic sport. So we appreciate the time, Frank. You have a fantastic rest of your evening. And, uh, of course, you got to watch Timmy Trumpet today. That was – yeah. Oh, that was a special. I was watching right before, the, right before you came on. Right before you came on. You know, it was it, it was for sure. It, it was great. But we do appreciate it, Frank, and uh, best of luck to you going and forward. And I would love nothing more than to see Timmy Trumpet return in the Mets win the World Series. Is that, your, is that your goal? Like, is that a dream for you here in 2022? Yes, Timmy Trumpet to return and the Mets to close out the World Series. That would be pretty uh, special. That would be pretty special. I definitely would. Definitely would. Definitely would. We appreciate it, Frank. Thanks for coming on, man. All right. Talk to you guys later.